Hello, here I am with part two of my insect altered book art journal. I um, said I was going to, in my last video, do some grunging of the cover, which I did. I sanded it, but I slightly damaged the spine. So I've done a little repair and I'm going to paint the repaired area. But first I'm going to prepare, protect the area that I don't want to paint on. So I'm just using some washi tape. I like washi tape because it peels off quite nicely. Just testing it peeled off without damaging the book cover. This is the back of the book, I think. Yes, that's the back. And again, I'm protecting this area. I'm just going to mix up some light, some of this light blue with some white paint. And it looks like one coat is going to do the job. That's great. Sorry, I've got a bit off screen there. I'll be back in a sec. And I remember. Here we go. <laughs> I've begun to speed this up a little bit. Not a lot. Just a bit so you don't have to um, endure me painting slowly. <laughs> and again, I've gone a bit off screen. And I'm going to do the back. That's where the damage is. Or was. Now it's repaired. That was a bit daft of me to be too um, hard with the sanding. I was actually using a sander and I hadn't realised I had the edge of it hitting the spine there. But never mind, a lot of my art is repairing the mistakes I've made. <laughs> or amending them somehow. So that peels off very nicely. And that's once it's dry... I can carry on with the next part of the video. So I've decided, and I wasn't sure whether to do this at first, because I liked the cover as it was, but I have decided I am going to put the Beatles on the front of the page, because that was my original intent. And what I do is I apply some black paint, first of all, and then later, in, um, later on, after it's dried and the stencil has dried, I'm going to go in with some gold. I want to say black actually, it is actually Payne's Grey, but it's almost black. And I'm using the end of one of my roller sponges as a dabber. Now I made this stencil, it's my own design and I cut it myself and I absolutely love it. I have some plans to use it in other things and I think, well I know because I've tested it, it works really well with um, spackle. So here are the pages and now I'm going to alter all the pages. I'm going to do some tearing, I'm going to be doing some uh, folding and I'm going to be doing some gessoing. So I'm going to start off with some gluing <laughs> because I like to glue some of the pages together. Not all of them, some of them. I like to reinforce some areas. If, so, if there's some loose bits or bits that don't look right, I think it's quite nice to glue those together to reinforce the book. And I've heard somewhere, I think it was Robin McClendon, that start you start at the back and work your way forward. Apparently it works better. I'm going to do a flip out with this page. It's an insect, it's from the insect related book that my friend gave me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sandwich it between two pages. And then later on, when I finished all the gluing and such like, uh, what I'm going to do is, am I going to tear that? Yes, I tear a bit out. I'm trying to figure out how to do it. There we go. Tearing these out. That's it. I'm going to sandwich it between those two and I'm going to have it flipping. Can't decide which side. Rather gruesome legs there. So popping some glue, just using glue stick, because they will be reinforcing. I'm struggling with that glue stick a bit. I will be reinforcing with, oh gosh, it's really playing me up there. <laughs> uh, I'll be reinforcing with sewing later on. There. I'm just going to trim the top and bottom. But first I'm going to do a little bit more gluing. I'm going to glue these pages together. Still struggling with my glue, sorry about that. I sort it out in a bit. So I like to glue that page together because it's the centre of a signature where I've torn out pages. And it strengthens it. Now I can fold over this bit, it's dried. 
and I can trim the top and bottom I'm going to do at this stage. I think I am. It's just bugging me leaving it like that. I could have left it until the end. But I like it neat as I'm working. <laughs> there we go. So that's a nice fold out. Um, I'm going to do some pockets here. So I'm going to do a pocket on that side and I'm going to do the same on the other side. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue at the top and bottom, but I will be sewing that to reinforce it at a later date. The reason why I'm including so many pockets is because I have so many tags and ephemera that I made, which I want to be at, able to add to this book. And I do like pockets and tags and things. Right, so I'm going to glue those back to back. The other good thing about um, gluing is you, you end up with less pages to work in, which is quite nice because an altar book can be rather large otherwise. I mean, I've already taken out some pages, but now I'm gluing them together. And I think I end up with about 16 or 17 um, spreads to do. I'm having a think about this as so I'm going to glue this one down. I'm not going to do a pocket on every single page because I like some pages to be blank as well. So I'm gluing that down. And now I'm going to put a little pocket at the bottom there with some of the pages that I took out. That's the good thing about taking out the pages is you end up with little bits you can use. And this is going to be at an angle. So I'm going to cut that bit off. And I'm going to punch a semicircle in the middle. Using the bigger punch. I think it's a two inch one. And I'm just going to glue just around the edges. Because again, that will be sewn to reinforce it as much as I can. It's difficult to sew right near the centre of the book. These two pages are going to be glued together. Basically, I go through the book doing this sort of thing. It's quite fun. And it saves time later. I'm going to do another flip out here. As you can see, my glue is behaving now. There we go. And that's going to flip the other way in like that. There we go. I quite like a flip out because I'm going to keep that page. I'm not going to touch that. And here I'm just putting another pocket at the bottom there. Now I do a lot of sewing, but I cut all that out. there. We're getting near the front of the book now. I'm going to do another side one there. There we go. I quite like pockets as well because if it's a journal and you want to write things that are private you can tuck them in a pocket. I'm just going to glue this whole page together. And I'm going to glue these two together and that's all the gluing done. So now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and then I'm going to come back and we're going to do some gessoing. Right, so I'm going to work again on the beetle at the front. The paint has dried and the stencil has dried. So now I'm going to come in with some gold paint. 
I fancied gold because I read a lovely book earlier on this year called Miss Benson's Beatles by Rachel Joyce. It's a lovely book, a lovely story. I really enjoyed it. In fact, I like everything that Rachel Joyce writes. She's very good. And the gold beetle features quite strongly in the storyline. So the first coat wasn't good enough, so I'm going in with the second one. And what I've done is I've slightly offset the way I place the stencil. So when I take it off, you'll see there's a hint of three dimension. And that's because not all the black is covered by the gold. Do you see what I mean? It looks almost three dimensional. There's a little flash there. Oh, I'm adding another page in there before I do the gessoing. I thought this page needed a little bit of something. There we go. I'm trying to line it up. <laughs> pressing down firmly and of course that will be sewn as well. So I've come back now, I've done the sewing, I'm now going to do the gesso. This is the gesso I use. It's inexpensive and a little bit goes a long way. So I'm going to apply gesso lightly throughout the book. This helps prepare the pages, it knocks back some of the uh, foxing and stuff, but I don't always cover right to the edges because I quite like the natural colour at the edges. And I still like to be able to see the text showing through because it is an altered book art journal. I've cut out all the um, hair drying bits and in fact I won't show you everything. I'm just showing you this bit. Now this page I went over three times because I didn't want the religious aspect to show through. So that's certainly the writing there got covered up a lot. And even though I've applied hair dryer, it still feels a bit damp to me, so I'm putting some greaseproof paper in between the pages as I work through the book. I'm not going to show you all of the gessoing, I'm just giving you an idea of what I'm doing. This page has some damage, so I need to cover up that damage a bit as well. And I like the fact that as I do this, the stitching shows up more, which I really like. And you can see the sewing where I've done it as well. So as you can see, some, some pages have just a very light coat. Some I do a thicker coat as well. And we're getting near the end of the book here. I've cut out a bit of this because once you've seen a page being gessoed, you've seen a page being gessoed. <laughs> You don't need to use a roller, by the way. I find it quicker, but you can just use a paintbrush. I normally do, actually. I just felt like using the roller. As you can see, I'm doing it quite roughly there. This is the last two pages. I quite like the colour, but I'm just going to knock it back a bit. And now the book is quite wet, even though I've used in between um, each page, I've used the hairdryer to dry it. It's touch dry, but it feels very damp. So this is the next day. I let it dry completely overnight. I stood the book up and I fanned all the pages so they didn't stick together. And I've gone through and just for fun, I've added a few of my bits and bobs that I've made previously. And I'm going to work on one of the pages, do a double page spread. So here it is how it looks now. I'm loving it already. And I haven't used all of my bits and bobs, so I've still got plenty to use. And they will probably get moved around a bit as I'm working in the book. Here's that flip out page. Here's a page I haven't done. But this is the page I'm going to, I'm going to go to the page I'm going to work on now. This is it this page. Certainly not that one. It's this page. I'm going to work on this page. So I've got my stencil out. I've already planned what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put a little bit of stenciling here and I'm just doing it faintly. I want a nice light page on this one. For some reason that's speaking to me. So I'm doing a little bit of ombre. I'm using my roller because it's got a nice fine texture. So I'm going from pink to blue. Just take that off and now I can apply some of the papers that I have in mind. 
I've got this lovely Stamperia pad. I'm going to be using that. Now, I rather wish I'd done some textured um, stamping in the background at this stage. So that's going to go there and that's going to be forming a little bit of a pocket. This is the inside cover of my Stamperia pad. I think it's called Imagine. I do love them and I love the colours on it. It's nice and soft and gentle. So I'm just going to apply glue to the top and the edge and the bottom. I'm not sure, but I might go in later and reinforce with sewing. I don't know if I'd really need to. So that's the edges pressed down. I'm going to pop this little card in, which has some information about insects. It's also blank on the back, so if I want to write on it, I can. Now on the right hand side, I'm going to use another piece of that paper. And this time I'm going to glue all of it down. I'm going to not I'm not going to leave a pocket on that side. I'm going to get my greaseproof paper to press that down firmly. I use that because I don't really want to get glue on my hands, which spreads elsewhere on the pages. There we go. Press that down firmly. Now the next stage, I want to stamp some of the Tim Holtz insects. And it's kind of difficult. I want to use my stamping platform so I make sure I get it right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue, I'm going to stick that down with some washi tape. I'm also going to use the magnets. This means I get a perfect stamp uh, with this. I don't mind not getting perfect stamping with some other, if I'm just doing background stamping, but I, these are the focal points. I want them to look good. So I want three in a row. I like three in a row like that. Just making sure they're straight and they're lined up how I want them to be. The stamping platform is well worth investing in. I really like mine. I don't use it all the time, but it's very useful for getting things straight. And now I'll be helping my sister do these charity cards for her village stall. Um, I'll probably find it quite useful for that as well. Press down firmly. And if it isn't right, you can go over again. And yes, I could do with a bit more darkness on the left hand side in particular. So I'm going over again, pressing down firmly again. There we go, that's a lot better. So I'm glad I took my time to do that. So I have a slight whoopsie when I pull this off, slightly tear the paper. So I'm going to go, go from the other side and I'll glue that bit down later. The stamp area paper already had some dark edging to it. So I've got my um, Stabilo woodies. I'm just going around the edges to match that just very lightly and I'm going to wet it with um, a brush and to do that all the way around the edges. So here is the first page spread in my insect themed art journal altered book. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and got some ideas to try out yourself. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.